Iraq, well, the police have stepped up the investigations in the gang rape case of the 16-year-old nun in a Hindu convent. Three special teams have been formed to nab the accused and some more shocking details have emerged. A warning on the convent wall. Warning erased after police arrived. This is the latest revelation in the rape of a 16-year-old at a convent in Hennur. The police stepped up their investigations and formed three special teams to look into the case. The investigations revealed that the assailants wrote on the inner wall and the ground floor of the two-story building. And what did they write? We have videoed what we have done to you on your nude body. You should give us money, else we will release the footage to TV channels. This warning written in a red sketch pen was allegedly erased before the police could arrive at the scene of crime. I'm standing right outside the particular seminary. It's called uh, Sisters of Holy Nativity. And this is exactly the place where the rape was committed. The neighbors here, I spoke to a man next to this particular uh, seminary. He says uh, the, uh, there is no such incident where the people came the next day and erased the message on the wall and there was no such message written on the wall. Yes, there was a message written on the left leg of the girl saying that if you do not give us money, we will publish the video on the internet. Uh, but uh, on the wall or any such place, no such message was written. The police say that they are investigating the case from all angles. Almost 50 people have been interrogated in and around Hennoor, Banaswadi, uh, Kamanahalli. The police have uh, uh, you know, rounded up a lot of suspects who are habitual offenders in this particular area and they have questioned them about this act. They have also questioned them about their phone records and where were they and when this particular incident happened. Uh, but the police are remaining tight-lipped about any developments in nabbing the culprits but they do suspect that it can be a Nigerian involved. It's, they can be, allegedly. Nothing is clear as of now. But as we see it here in this particular area, it's very quiet and it's very residential area. It's, uh, it really goes on to show that somebody who has planned this for a very, very long time has actually committed this particular act. There is still confusion over the exact time when the crime was committed as a girl could not clearly remember what happened. The girl who is out of danger has been visiting St. John's Hospital for counselling. She's mentally disturbed. She is in St. John's Hospital. The counsellors are speaking to her. It'll, it'll be very long before she actually recovers from this mental trauma. It is not easy. Remember, she was mentally training to dedicate her life uh, to service of, for the religion and God. But now she has to completely change track and try to come out of this particular incident because it's, it's, you know, she didn't even know what happened to her. She was uh, sprayed on and she was unconscious. And when she woke up, she realized that this thing had happened to her. So the doctors are working hard. She's out of uh, danger. Uh, she is doing well physically but mentally there's a lot of trauma a lot of depression a lot of shock which she has to come out of it's been three days since the incident and the cops are yet to trace the accused how much longer will it take remains to be seen Vivek Vinayak News 9 Bengaluru well, after much criticism for their lackadaisical work, Bengaluru police are finally pulling their socks up. Now, with new arrests in the Fraser Town rape case, investigation is picking up case. The KG Halli police have arrested three more accused in connection with the Fraser Town rape case. The accused have been identified as Hafiz, Saud, and Shoaib. But that's not all. The car in which the horror unfolded has finally been seized. The black Honda Civic, which belongs to the victim's friend, is currently parked at the Bharti Nagar police station, where the cops are busy looking for clues that could give them an insight on the molestation of the 22-year-old. They have so far lifted fingerprints and have also taken sample fingerprints from the three who have been arrested. Haider Nasser, the main accused who molested the girl, has also been made to give his fingerprints. Another accused, Safi, is absconding. Initial investigations were misled by Haider Nasser, but the police collected sufficient evidence which led to the other accused. DCP of Bengaluru East, Satish Kumar, has also stated that the accused have confessed to their crime. <laughs> The 22-year-old victim will be called in to identify the accused. It was just yesterday that the suspended cop, along with the two accused, was given bail. 
The Alturu Gate Police are making steady progress in the case. With two more arrests and the seizure of the car in which the horror unfolded, looks like the cops will crack the case soon and arrest the last accused who is absconding at the moment. The ACP in charge has also formed two teams to investigate the case and solve it at the earliest. Wish to Prasad for News 9, Bengaluru. And while the BJP Yuva Morcha staged a protest against the Home Minister in Kodagu, demanding action against the increasing atrocities against women. Bengaluru has witnessed a horror week, as within a span of one week, 17 cases of sexual violence, as many as five rapes in the last 48 hours, have been reported. Protesting this was BJP youth wing workers who braved the rain just to express their dissent. The protesters demanded the immediate resignation of the chief minister and the home minister for having failed to tackle the issue effectively. The home minister assured action against the accused and also promised effective measures to ensure the safety of women and children. The BJP Mahila Morcha also submitted a memorandum to the Home Minister asking for immediate action against the accused in the rape case and also to ensure safety for women and children. The Home Minister has promised to set up fast track codes and has also assured to step up the safety for women and children across the state. It now remains to be seen how fast and effectively can the Minister fulfill his promises. Manjanath KB for News 9, Kodagu. And with the increasing incidence of atrocities against women, the state's Home Minister K.J. George has issued guidelines to the police department. Here's a look at some of the guidelines. Guidelines have been issued to senior police officials and they need to be adhered to strictly. It is directed to the Bengaluru City Police Commissioner, State DGP, ADGP in charge of law and order. Zonal IGPs besides the SPs located in each district. The Home Minister's directive is that police across all districts will have to enforce strictly the closing time prescribed for bars and restaurants as well as commercial establishments. The guidelines mandate that the police have to enforce the timing strictly on a daily basis. The police will have to ensure night patrolling in and around areas near the police station. GPRS fitted patrol vehicles. The State Home Ministry will provide additional funds for purchase of more patrolling vehicles, not just across major cities, but also in villages. There are guidelines issued relating to investigation in rape cases. There would be a special office in each police station where the victim could report or file the case. In case of rape cases falling within city limits, the respective DCP will conduct the investigation himself. In case of districts, the responsibility for such investigation will rest with the SP of the district. The guidelines prohibit disclosure of the rape victim's name and if such a leak were to occur, strict action would be initiated. Police to visit victim's home in an hour's time. The guidelines also mandate that a lady police official should be present when the victim is questioned and the police will also help in counselling the victim. The government will set up fast track courts to speed up hearing and disposal of rape cases. Besides this, the ministry is also planning to increase the number of police personnel in Bengaluru. A new stand report. Back well, neither did they die a peaceful death, nor do they get an honourable burial. The crash site in Ukraine describes the scattered lives and dreams of the 298 on board. This is the debris of the Malaysia Airlines that carried 298 passengers and was shot down in Ukraine. The debris contains body parts of passengers scattered in the silent, open field waiting to be claimed. While some bodies remain strapped to their seats, few were scattered in the field wearing in-flight headphones. 
While the families wait for the remains of their loved ones, no recovery work is being done at the crash site, which is being controlled by the pro-Russian rebel group. The crash site has novels, beach sandals, vacation guides, passports, all scattered around. While no work has been initiated by the government, some locals in the area decided to take up things in their hands. A small group of local government workers camping near the area has split up the crash site in an orderly manner to look for the bodies. The workers have marked the spot with a white cloth tied to a stick where they have found the human remains, the bodies that are lying in the field and the roadside have now started decomposing but there is no sign of rescue crew. A day after US President Barack Obama criticized Russia over the plane crash, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister attacked US for acting like a bad surgeon, for blaming separatists and Russia without waiting for the investigations to be completed. While the world leaders are playing the blame game, the bodies of the passengers are neglected and are waiting to be claimed. A Newsland report. Well, it was the Dhoti ban against which Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jay Lalita had protested earlier this week. Today, it was the language issue which caught her attention. First protest surfaced over Hindi. Now, Tamil Nadu denounces Sanskrit. Yes, a new language row began after the Central Board of Secondary Education passed a circular on the centre's directives to celebrate Sanskrit week from August 7th. Showing her resentment over the same, Jailalitha wrote a letter to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This would be in keeping with the cultural and linguistic sensitivities in a diverse country like ours. While the celebrations would be conducted by the Central Board of Secondary Education, Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangathan and National Council of Educational Research and Training in all state, the state governments have also been requested to organize such events at the state, district and other levels. Tamil Nadu has a rich cultural heritage based on the ancient Tamil language and there has also been a strong social justice and language movement. Hence, any official celebration of Sanskrit week in Tamil Nadu is highly inappropriate. She even asserted that instead of Sanskrit, it should be a classical language week in each state based on their linguistic heritage. Allies cry foul. It was not just Jailalita who showed dissatisfaction. BJP allies MDMK and PMK condemned BJP's move as mischievous and dangerous. Culture and language has always been a sensitive issue for Tamilians. It now remains to be seen as to how the BJP takes an inclusive stand on this matter. A News 9 report.